ask uh, Mr. Dwayne. Greetings and good evening. So happy to be here this evening with our partners from uh, the East Coast to the Midwest and anyone else that is currently logged into our webinar to celebrate National Poetry Month, which was April, uh, but also to celebrate our young people, celebrate their resilience, celebrate their activism, um, and to celebrate um, books and poetry in my very own library. My name is Dwayne Davis. I'm the executive director of K-12 education initiatives at the University of Chicago. And I am also uh, the director of Chicago My Very Own Library. So I run My Very Own Library uh, with 17 CPS schools and our U Chicago charter schools. But we are in six states in the Dominican Republic. Um, and we're really a program, uh, a partnership in every local community looking to end book deserts looking to get books to families, get books to kids, get books in households, but also to celebrate the love of literacy, the love of learning, and the love of creativity. So just very happy to celebrate our students this evening and this wonderful partnership between the United Way of Greater Newark, the United Way of Delaware, and all of our participating elementary schools and middle schools this evening. Um, so this summer or coming up soon, I would just encourage everybody to follow all of us on our social media, all of our organizations, to check out our My Very Own Library YouTube page. If you're watching us on Facebook, like our pages on Facebook. Uh, we'll all be doing work this summer uh, and leading into the summer to support families and support schools. And to that end, I'm gonna hand it over to the uh, Delaware Reads, My Very Own Library Director from Delaware, uh, the, the person, two of the people, uh, Karen and Ken from the United Ways um, in Newark and Delaware, uh, keep me motivated, keep me going. They're always being creative. They're the, the, the geniuses behind getting us together. I want to hand it over to Ken. And thank you, Ken, for having us this evening and for, and for putting this together for us. No problem. Thank you, Mr. Duane, And thank you for that great introduction to my very own library. I would just like to take this opportunity to thank our participating schools, um, Hawthorne Avenue School in Newark, New Jersey, Kenwood Academy, Kenwood Academy Academic Center and Bret Hart Elementary from Chicago, the Byard School and Fieri Charter School in Wilmington, Delaware. I would also like to thank our sponsors, my very own Library of Chicago, United Way of Delaware and United Way of Greater Newark. Now I would like to introduce and thank Mr. Nate Durant, co-head of school for Fieri Charter School, AKA the boss with the sauce, for just stepping in with his leadership, his, pers his great personality, and just being overall uh, one of the instrumental pieces for making tonight a success. Mr. Nate. Wow, thank you. Ken, I, nobody has ever said anything that nice about me before, but I, I thank you. Um, and, and everyone at the United Way of, of Delaware, the United Way of Greater Newark. My name is Nate Durant. I am the co-head of school at Freire Charter School in Wilmington. Um, and I am excited to be here today. Uh, my very own library, all of the schools that are here, the adults from Chicago to New Jersey who have worked diligently to breathe life into this event for our students. Um, and, they would, and our kids are gonna use their voice to, to share their ideas. And I am so proud of them because language matters and their words matter and their words have power. And we're gonna feel some of, that, some of that power tonight. And I didn't say my students, I said our students. Um, and our students have power and our students matter, whether they are in Chicago, Newark or Delaware. Every single one of you matter, and I'm proud of you, and I love you. And if you don't hear it anywhere else, know Mr. Nate, Mr. Durant said that he loves you, and I mean that from the, from the bottom of my heart. And all of these adults who are here right now, we love you. The adults who are in the room, thank you for coming together for our kids. You don't make a difference. You are the difference. And it's 6 o'clock, 6.30 on a Tuesday night. You could be anywhere in the world, but you're choosing to be here with us. And they say actions speak louder than words. And, and I salute you and thank you for, 
for being here. Okay, I'm done. I know Lori said, Nate, you got three minutes and you got to keep it to the time frame, but y'all got me hyped. And it's hard for me to stop when I keep rolling. But I'm 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 gonna slow down because I had one job. My one job was to introduce our host for the evening. And she's a teacher, she's a poet, she's a mother, a friend, an activist, a phoenix. She could kick a remix. She's a little bit of everything. Um, some say she she's bilingual because um, she speaks Spanish. She's a Spanish teacher and she speaks English. But truly, I believe she is she's trilingual because and, and you'll see this tonight. There's Spanish, there's English, but she's also fluent in love and her love and passion for our students will be felt. And, and it really just pours out in every word that she speaks. So without any further delay, I'm proud to introduce my colleague, my friend, my inspiration in a lot of ways on the poetry tip, Freire Charter Wilmington's own Miss Alexis Sims. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Nate. I appreciate that uh, fantastic intro. Um, and thank all of you for joining us this evening. Um, poetry, um, like Mr. Nate said, poetry is a language and it can be very personal. And it has taken a lot of courage for the participating students to share their work with us tonight. And as a fellow poet, I want to honor that courage by starting us off with a poem about my own personal growth. And this first piece is called The Phoenix Rises. How is one expected to fulfill a destiny of greatness when greatness was all but ground into dust beneath the feet of narcissism's feelings of inadequacy? Lurking in the shadows of backhanded compliments and overt criticisms, I was forced to seek shelter in a small, dark place. In an attempt to escape the heavy clouds of disappointment that rained acid and left permanent scars on my genius, stunting my growth and binding the magical properties within because recognizing superpowers in another shines a light on one's own mediocrities. Nobody wants to be a superhero. Nobody has the patience. So instead, deprived of budding flame of the oxygen it needs to grow, they fear the fire's potential for destruction, so they extinguish the light, try to contain the blaze, because they didn't understand and neither did I until now. Ooh, I apologize, lost my spot there. Until now, I feel, I feel the warmth radiate from within, a spark that ignites the passions deep inside my soul and no longer causes trepidation. I realize this power has no limitations. I burn so brightly the sun takes cover and stars cower in my flickering shadows, this pain has a purpose. And while it may seem the steps I take on this journey ruin the land and leave behind an unimaginable carnage. When the dust falls and the air settles, I've left the soil fertile for regrowth, you see. They thought I was a wildfire needing to be doused. They didn't have the patience to see the restoration, to notice the sprouts of creation left in my wake. They don't believe in mythical creatures or fairy tales, but only the phoenix can rise from the ashes anew and unscathed. And that's that piece. Thank you for listening. And I right now would like to bring to the virtual stage, Mr. Tyrone Brooks from the Hawthorne Avenue School in Newark, in Newark, I apologize, Delaware, we have Newark. In Jersey, it's Newark, New Jersey. And he will be introducing the poets from his school. Mr. Brooks, you muted. Thank you for that kind introduction. I appreciate it. My name is Tyrone Brooks. I'm an African studies teacher at Hawthorne Avenue School in Newark, New Jersey. And I have the pleasure of uh, teaching the four scholars who are here this evening that are going to present poetry. And my first poet for this evening, her name is Sadaka Carmichael. Uh, she's a seventh grade student at our school. And Sadaka is inspired by her dream of going to a dream college and being successful and also being the best version of your, herself. So at this time, without further ado, please enjoy the poetry of Sadaka Carmichael. Okay, hello. Before I start, I would just like to know if everyone can hear me. 
Can everyone hear me? Yep. Okay. Black girl magic. Black and white girls are treated the same. Well, that was a white lie. Rapunzel, Cinderella, Aurora, Snow White. They're all the perfect princesses, right? Rapunzel, shiny blonde hair. When you want to sparkle, think of her. Cinderella, perfect prince, pretty blue eyes. When we see the perfect future, we look through her. Aurora, perfect shape, blonde hair, perfect smile. When we go to sleep, she's the girl we dream to be. Snow White, shy, beautiful voice, fair skin. If you want to sing her perfect notes, be more quiet. These are all society standards of beauty. Only one problem, they're all white. It took Disney till 2009 to even think of making a black princess. Even then, they're all fatherless, poor, villains, or not even human. I opened a book, this is what I see. A blue-eyed blonde man and a blue-eyed blonde bride-to-be. This book doesn't even mention anyone that looks like me. Black Girl Magic is more than just a hashtag. It's a movement to empower black females so they recognize their true magic, the melanin in our skin, the inner beauty within, the kinky hair flying around, full lips perfectly shaped and round. We're drowned by the comments of humanity that can ruin any black girl's mentality. All different shapes, colors, sizes. Black girls are smart, confident, and beautiful. Where are all their prizes? They say, don't be loud, that's ghetto. They say, don't be proud, you're too aggressive. Too fat, too skinny, too black, too light. The only thing wrong with us is that we're not white. Loving and powerful, successful, unique. Keep your head up, black girl, and keep fighting for the future you seek. Thank you. Thank you for that poem, um, Sadaka. It was amazing black girl magic. At this time, we're gonna prepare for our second poet. He's a, also a seventh grade student at Hawthorne Avenue School. His name is Makai Mills. Makai is inspired by his plans of buying his own home for himself and his family, and also working, to hard, working hard to help the people of his community. At this time, without further ado, please enjoy the poetry of Mr. Makai Mills. Two-sided world. I may be a winner, but I ain't a winner like Tom Brady. I'm not the best rapper, but one day they'll call me the real Slim Shady. We should be grateful we are alive because tomorrow's not promised. Never swear on God, then tell a lie, just be honest. I'm in this world to prove to everybody why I belong here and show off my talents. This world is full of unfairness, lies, different races' rights aren't even balanced. Every day I wish the world would have equality. Time goes by fast and it seems like everybody has boosted up, including technology. It's crazy how one, -sided, how one side of the world is beautiful and then the other is so ugly. One day I had a dream that I woke up on the beautiful side of the world and I said, wow, isn't this world so lovely? On the beautiful side, people have more than what they needed. Most, most of the things they had was from robbery, murder, and greed. On the ugly side of the world, most people suffer from poverty. People from the beautiful side, from, from the beautiful side stole them and act like they hit the lottery. Things look nice on the beautiful side, but the people are ugly within. They rape, they steal, they take everything but the color of our skin. I woke up on, and, I was on, and I was back on the beautiful side of the world and that I was in actuality. I realized that only a small percentage of the world on the beautiful side, I realized that only a small percentage live in the beautiful side of the world, but the beautiful side of the world is not always a righteous reality. Awesome, thank you, Makai. I appreciate that poem, powerful in all of his ways. Um, at this time, we have one of our sixth grade students from Hawthorne Avenue School. This sixth grade student's name is Winston Hendricks. 
He's prepared a poem for us all. And he's also inspired by um, Jeffrey Kinney, the Diary of the Wimpy, Diary of a Wimpy Kid series. And he's also inspired by human kindness. At this time, enjoy the poetry of Winston Hendricks. Good evening. For your enjoyment, my freestyle presentation is a poem titled Practice. Practice until you reach your goal in life. Respect your elders because they are your guiding lights. Achieve your goal by studying, working, and participating in everything. Community. Be great, help your community, and give back. We need each other. Trust yourself and believe in yourself. Ignore the people who say you can't do it. Remember, trust the fifth letter. Concentrate on making the world a better place for future generations. Excellence should be all around you. That's how you achieve it. At this time, I'm going to introduce a seventh grade student from Hawthorne Avenue School. Her name is Fahiza Belewu. She's going, um, going to present to us her freestyle poem. And um, Fahiza is inspired by her mom, her dad, and her religion. So at this time, please enjoy the poetry of Ms. Fahiza, Fahiza Belewu. Hi everyone, my name is Fahiza and I'm a student at Hawthorne Avenue School. The poem I'm gonna be reciting is Freedom for All. Black human racism discrimination. These are the errors in our nation. George Floyd was killed by whites. We need to fight. They always say we're troublemakers, but we are really peacemakers. They treat us like slaves, put us in graves, and then lie to the world that they are great, even though they hate. We plead for our liberation, then they give us starvation. They murder, they shatter, they disorder, then we put them in order. That's not all. Breonna Taylor shot without a thought, but you wonder why we fought. Why can't there be freedom for all so we won't fall? We don't want our nation torn apart. Is that really smart? Why do they hate the skin that we're in? Is it because of our melanin? Stop police brutality because we demand freedom and equality. Outstanding, Faiza. Thank you so much. Um, Lori, can you see Winston at this time? No, it doesn't look like he's here. So I'll keep an eye out for him and we'll we'll dovetail him back in if he gets here. Okay. Sounds good to me. Thank okay. you. All right, now, so our, all of our students from, uh, from Hawthorne Avenue School, we appreciate you. Your words were so powerful. If you are on Facebook right now, make sure you show them some love in that chat. These amazing young students, I, I, I just can't believe we have started off so powerfully already. Um, next to the stage, I would like to introduce Miss Emily Hockman from Kenwood Academy. Kenwood Academy Academic Center in Chicago, Illinois, and she is going to introduce her poets. Hi, good evening. Um, our first poet says her self-doubts inspire her because although negativity can bring her down, it also motivates her to prove them all wrong. Her poetry reflects how she sees the issues of the world with honesty and a call to action. Please enjoy the poetry of Andrea Gima. Prefix comprehensively. Lack of equity for women back to when gender norms were normalized. A color, my color, a skin tone. My skin tone became the main cause for justifying the act of mistreating, misconstruing, and misconceiving against people of color in countless backgrounds. Yet what are trust the many respectable authorities that make it their job to serve and protect the community. We're supposed to go along with systemic inequality when it comes to gap income, access to resources and employment for white collar jobs. But bias and influence stemming from misjudgment comes into play. There's sometimes irony in life, liberty and the pursuit of happiness. Where was Oscar Grant's life after being shot in the back, begging for his life and being wrongly mistaken for taking part in a fight? Where was Reverend Clemens's liberty for devotion to faith after being killed with the person induced with hate and the notion that free will for all, just 
won't do it. Where's the pursuit of happiness when Samira Rice had to witness her 12-year-old son, Tamar Rice, taken into an ambulance after being shot and reported for the act of pointing a gun, which actually turned out to be a toy gun? Mistreating, misconstruing, and misconceiving. One's ambition and capability, not one's worth and appearance. Juxtaposition. Not just, unjust. Thank you so much, Andrea. Such a powerful poem. Our next poet, from Kenwood Academy Academic Center in Chicago is inspired by all the oppression and wrong done in the world. She says that by just doing the littlest things, she knows she can make a difference or a change in life. She's able to take emotional topics and express her views clearly and effectively, something many of us adults are still trying to learn. Please enjoy the words of Kyla Barnes. The land of the free. The land of the free, the phrase we seek. But how? Being black isn't chic. The world, the US to us is bleak. I'm a black woman scared to walk down the street. The fear of being assaulted by a creep. But on the other hand, me walking down my street ends up a call to the police. That went over your head, I see. Neck up under his knee, I can't breathe. The US is where racism, discrimination, and xenophobia truly meet. But again, you didn't know it got that deep. Calling you for help, but now I'm dead. No blood left to bleed. I see the pattern. You don't want us black folks to succeed. Wanting my car to smell good, fresh, like Febreze. To them, that is a threat indeed. Kim, if you don't know the difference between your gun and your taser, you shouldn't be the one I can see. Ressy Taylor, DeAndre, George Floyd, Micaiah Bryant, Dante Wright. Say their names, let it ring, or the oppression of my people will continue to be a thing. You have to realize they have no real technique but to kill everyone who looks like me. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you so much for your words. All the students from Kenwood, we appreciate you. Um, make sure that you are blowing up that Facebook chat. They need to hear you. They need to see you. These words are powerful. And so our next school, uh, next up, we have Principal Charlie Bright to introduce a poet from Bret Hart Elementary School, which is also in Chicago. So let's give them some love, show them some love in that Facebook chat. Let's get ready, Ms. Principal Charlie Bright. Alexis, we're gonna move on to yep. the Bayard School. Bayard. Um, looks like, yeah, it looks like um, they were not able to make it, so. Uh -oh. Okay, no problem, no problem. Well, we'll look out and we'll bring them back if we find them. Fantastic. So um, from the Bayard School, now we're back here in Wilmington, Delaware. Um, Miss Fatina Nair will be introducing her scholars from the Bayard School. So let's keep that chat flowing with all that love. Good evening. Hi, I'm excited tonight to introduce our poet, Jayshon Jones. Jayshon is a student at the Bayard School. He is inspired by his love for sports and life. Tonight, he's going to be sharing a piece that is special and dear to him. And we're going to be able to see and understand how the things that seem so simple in life, right, can all be um, taken away. But um, in spite of that, um, he has shown resilience and um, he is continuing to strive to do those things that he loves the best. Jay Sean. 
Hello, my name is Deshaun Jones. I'm a student at the Viard School. I am in grade six. My poem is called Basketball Legends. Here, I will begin. Two years ago, I started playing basketball and I loved it. So I practiced and practiced till I could shoot a basketball with my eyes closed. But then COVID-19 came and the government shut the whole state down. The only way you could go outside is to get something to eat. But mostly all the stores were closed. The state, when the state opened back up, I was not as good at playing basketball as I was, and it made me mad. But I practiced and practiced till I could shoot a full court shot, and then I kept playing till I made it to the finals. My team won the game 67 to 36. Then I went home and I practiced, and I said to myself, I want to make my own basketball team. We would be unstoppable. We would be called the Raging Bulldogs and the best team to ever play. Thank you. So for the last portion of the freestyle segment, I would like to present three of my own students from the graduating class of 2021 from Friary Charter School here in Wilmington. First up, we have Serafina Mustafa. Serafina uses her poetry to process process her own personal experiences. She is inspired by the fact that she is in control of her own destiny by learning from those experiences and becoming a better person every day. Ms. Serafina, the floor is yours. Unmute for me, baby. Y'all can hear me. Yes, ma'am. Okay. The first poem is called Broke and Smart or Rich and Dumb. See, I don't want to be broke, but because I'm smart, I can change that. I would love to be rich, but because I'm dumb, I don't do crap. If I was broke, I can't provide some of the things that I need. But if I was smart, I can provide it and figure it out other than selling weed. If I was rich, I can buy anything that I want. But because I'm dumb, I could lose that money in a month. Broke with a job, not making enough. Smart, though, so I could break a dollar when times get tough. Rich, nice house, nice clothes, nice car. Dumb, so instead of trying to keep these things, I'm hanging at a bar. Broke, dangerous block, trashy sidewalk where no one cares. Smart, just because I'm in the hood don't mean I am the hood. There's a lot of knowledge that I could share. I'd rather be broke and smart than rich and dumb because having it all but working for none will leave you inexperienced and judged by some. See, broke and smart will leave you learning and teaching about things you've done, eventually making money off the information you've wrung. Never rich or dumb, no neither one, but you're happy you're still ground because now you've won. Thank you, Serafina. I appreciate you. Let's go ahead and get that light up that chat and on Facebook Live, please. And thank you. Get those flames in there for these Friary Dragons. Um, so next up, we have uh, Caleb Gravely, also graduating class of 2021. Caleb is inspired by his village, those around him who want to see him succeed and who are here to support him throughout that process. This is what pushes him to go for his dreams. Caleb, the floor is yours. All right, hello. My poem is called The Dark. I remember when I was a kid, I was afraid of the dark. I always thought something ugly would crawl out and hurt me. It was because I was pure and innocent. Purity isn't permanent and every child will be alone in the dark one day. That day was, for me was the passing of my grandmother. That was, this, that was something that a child could never expect or see. And I almost gave up on everything that I cared about. But those kinds of thoughts and actions don't belong in a child's mind. But as I grew older, there was a different kind of beauty in darkness that children can't appreciate. And demons come in different flavors like skills and the pills I hate. Mine wanted me to party, be rebellious and loathe life. Yours might tell you to eat, not to eat or keep you working all the time. But when the darkness came through my door, her hips screamed while she walked. She was seductive and pretty, even with the lights off. And everybody meets her one day. So I don't get wise to boo to talk about the awful things we as people face. Darkness isn't a jerk. You just got to get to know her. The purity of a child might be beautiful, but does that make the bitter world ugly? Just because you can't see what's in the dark doesn't mean it's hiding monsters. And that's my poem. Yes, thank you so much, Caleb. Thank you. And now this last poet from Friary, Victoria Campbell, again, my graduating class of 2021. Let's go. 
Unfortunately, she could not be here in person, but thankfully, because we are in this virtual setting, we are still able to her share her inspiring, inspiring words via video. Miss um, Victoria is inspired by her faith and she relies on her faith to push through any obstacles that come her way. She always comes out on the other side with a smile and a positive outlook. And so let's listen to the words of Miss Victoria Campbell. Don't let this quarantine make you feel like you're trapped in a cage. You are simply at home and not turning the page. The page of free time, self-discipline, and being with family. You see this being trapped at home and losing your sanity. You need to take this time to learn and decipher the things that feel that don't make you feel brighter. Learn from them, grow, see how you can make a change. Because soon in the future, things won't be the same. You see, you complain about being stuck with your family, but don't you see how that is a blessing? You need to appreciate your time for now. You don't want to regret it when they are in the ground. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. That was beautiful. And let's make sure we keep that, that Facebook chat live. Keep that going. Show love for all of our poets for the freestyle segment of our program. And now this next section of our program is going to hit a little different. Um, we're going to be focused on social justice. I'm sorry, getting tripped over my words here. We are going to be focused on social justice and we know that this gets a little bit heavy as if we haven't already had some powerful words already. Um, and so again, I'm going to start us off. And the poem that I'm going to read for you is called My Black Is. My Black my black is gorgeous. I am emulated across the world the way my skin grows and glows more powerful with the rays of the sun. The privileged risk their lives to glow like me. But no matter how hard they try, it's a glow they will never see because my melanin is patented and unable to be duplicated except through my womb. How unfortunate for you there is magic in my DNA that can't be taught. It's the reason why my hair defies gravity. You either have it or you don't understand you could never come close to this level of perfection. That is how gorgeous my black is. See, my black is bold. My black is so bold, it doesn't care who's in the room because my black takes up space, loud, proud, and assertive. The blood of Africa runs through these veins and no one in the room would exist without me, Eve Jean. So why would I ever shrink myself to suit your needs, child, please? You can only hope to be like me in your wildest dreams. You can call me what you want. I'll never apologize for being me. I'm speaking. That is how bold my black is. See, my black is intelligent. My black is so intelligently eloquent. I often hear that microaggressive compliment that equates my genius level brilliance with the lack of melanin. Oh, you, you speak so well. Is that so? Well, watch me use your language to cast these spells of abundance while you ponder my reaction to your redundancy because my black is excellent, so I know I speak so well. My mastery of your mediocre mismatch language is less than spectacular when you factor in the prowess with which I speak the African-American vernacular y la otra idioma que yo hablo. <laughs> yeah, I know. You're a little wary of my, linguist, my linguistic dexterity. It's got to be scary listening to me weave in and out of code switch, switching with such ease that you can barely hear me breathe between languages and dialects wondering what's she going to say next when you should worry more about who's up next because this dope black educator has a classroom to pat platform and the clapbacks when they ask for them because I'm tired of them equating our positive traits with the likes of Caucasians who can only flex because of the Africans and natives they invaded and I meant that with all the shades so you'll have to listen to this again before you realize it was yourself you played because that's how intelligent my black is see my black my black is more than what you bargained for do not underestimate my black because my black will back you into a corner and have you sucking your thumb if you try to play my black dumb my black is its own entity that cannot be quantified it is god body personified not to be objectified but every time i walk by i catch all the eyes no surprise my black is too fly and my black is also honest it keeps its promises my black speaks the truth the world doesn't want to honor teaching the lessons that my ancestors were murdered for by shady government infiltrators, COINTELPRO, but my black doesn't care. Walks in light and not fear because my black ain't never scared. So be prepared. 
my black is here. And that's that piece. And so now that I have gotten us on the road, let's uh, go back to Miss Victoria Campbell and we will listen to her video um, on her poem for social justice. Another body gone, another soul lost, another son buried and another daughter unfathered. When will justice finally be served and our voices finally heard? There are lives being lost and families being broken, cities being torn apart, legacies being stolen. People need to see that everyone is the same. We can't hurt others and let the innocent be blamed. Yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am. I'm so glad we were able to share Victoria's work with you this evening. Next, please welcome back to the stage, Mr. Caleb. All right, well, um, Gary got the camera. Okay, this poem is called Gen Z. I think there's an unrealistically high and stressful amount of expectation for America's Gen Z to perform in this world. Like we are a generation of lost youth. We are caught up in overtly polarizing, socially divisive politics. There are crazy riots in our street. Police are abusing their power. We are facing constant uncertainty of a financially viable future due to an aggressive co consumer capitalism. It drains our pockets, amplifies the cost of living. There's job saturation, degree saturation. Like we are literally create, careening towards a social media apocalypse as well. It's comprised of an over an ever increasing superficial lifestyle that revolves around influencers and celebrities pumping out these unrealistically beauty, standard, beauty standards, unattainably glamorous lifestyles, social media addiction. My kids are growing up in this world and they are getting the wrong impression of life. Life is sad and funny to say it. And funny to say it, it's turning to Wale. I find a passion writing these poems because I want to speak to my generation and with ever increasing social downturn, every increasing social downturn, we have to break the chains before they trap us. Life doesn't have to become what it's headed towards. And we must take change, make change for posterity because a society will grow great when its elders plant trees, their shade will never sit in. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Caleb. Thank you so much. Let's keep uplifting our poets in that Facebook chat. And next up, we have um, Miss Serafina Mustafa back to the stage. Go on, Serafina. Okay, can y'all hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. This second poem is called Big Plans. Yes, I'm small, but I have big plans. Things you say I can't, I know I can. I plan to make it faster than quicksand. I go high like a plane, only I won't land. Do you hear me? No. I'll say it again, only this time slow. You'll try to stunt my growth, but I'll continue to grow. Can I tell you a story? I put a smile on like it's my favorite shirt. There's a lot of ways to explain my hurt. But it's okay, I'm gonna make this work. I feel like I've been dragged through a pile of dirt. I'm hurt, but I was gonna thug it out. They drug it out, I can't fake it anymore. So I mean mug it out, I'm sorry. You can never feel me. You can never go through what I did and put a smile on like I did, but I did and I did a good job. You can't be proud of the, one I'm, the woman I'm becoming. Isn't it stunning? I learned how to talk before I turned to running. I'm no longer running from my feelings. I said I have big plans, not like the man who's selling grams with his mans, no, not that. No, this isn't a game. They will know my name. I have no shame. Yes, I'm small, but I have big plans. Things you say I can't, I know I can. I plan to make it faster than quicksand. I go high like a plane on the I won't land. Yes, dragons, let's go. These poems are giving me life right now. Let's, let's move on. We're going to bring back to the virtual stage our poets from Kenwood Academy. Um, we're going to start with Ms. Kyla Barnes. I am a black girl by April Chueke. I am a black girl. Yes, it's true. Don't let the looks fool you. I'm a black girl who is articulate. I use words like perfunctory because I can handle it. I'm a black girl who is geek, but also rather meek. I'm terrible at saying no and I say for and not foe. I am a black girl, but society tells me I'm not. 
with great absurdity, the American mentality enforces the reality of acting white equating to acting right. But I am a black girl because I survived those nights. Yeah, those sleepless nights and the eternal fights, scrutinizing my nappy fro and my African nose. I am a black girl because I've survived those times. When the hateful words came from black brothers of mine who were born from the womb of a black woman who were torn apart by social injustice. But a black woman's love is sweet, so sacred. Yet they have the audacity to profess their hatred. I am a black girl because I've been told I'm too tough, too rough, too dark to ever be enough. I am a black girl because I have been blessed with a curse to be a color acknowledged at its worst. I'm white when it comes to mannerism. I'm black when I'm a victim of racism. I'm white when I'm celebrated and I'm black when I'm infuriated. I have every right to be infuriated because the lack of integration and the education of the nation is not improving the situation. Our only salvation is communication, but you must pay attention. I am a black girl because I was raised in a society that hates me. They hate my color and my confidence, yet preach diversity. I am a black girl because I was taught to hate myself because the boys didn't date black girls, so they chose everybody else. I'm a black girl because I'm courageous and the color woman before me changed nations. I'm a masterpiece of creation, the quintessence of liberation and the beautiful black reality of my ancestors' imagination. Harriet, Ruby, Coretta, Rosa, Oprah, Michelle, say their names. These women changed the game and for freedom and not the fame. Thank you. Yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am. You better say that with your whole chest. I am loving it, loving it. And so now we would like to uh, bring up next, Miss Andrea Jima. Home by Warson Shear. No one leaves home unless home is the mouth of a shark. You only run for the border when you see the whole city running as well. Your neighbor's running faster than you, breath bloody in their throats. The boy you went to school with who kissed you dizzy behind the Alton factory is holding a gun bigger than his body. You only leave home when home won't let you stay. No one leaves home unless home chases you, fire under feet, hot blood in your belly. It's not something you ever thought of doing until the blade burnt threats into your neck. And even then you carried the anthem under your breath, only tearing up your passport in an airport's toilet, sobbing as each mouthful of paper made it clear that you wouldn't be going back. You have to understand that no one puts their children in a boat unless the water is safer than the land. No one burns their palms under trains beneath carriages. No one spends days and nights in the stomach of a truck feeding on newspaper unless the miles traveled means something more than journey. No one crawls under fences no one wants to be beaten pitied. No one chooses refuge camps or strip searches where your body's left aching or prison because prison is safer than a city of fireworks. And one prison guard in the night is better than a truckload of men who look like your father. No one could take it. No one could stomach it. No one skin would be tough enough. But go home blacks, refugees, dirty immigrants, asylum seekers, sucking our country dry. Blacks with their hands out, they smell strange, savage mess of their country and now they wanna mess ours up. How do the words, the dirty looks roll off your backs? Maybe because the blow is softer than a limb torn off or the words are more tender or the insults are easier to swallow then rubble, then bone, then your child body in pieces. I wanna go home, but home is the mouth of a shark. Home is the barrel of the gun and no one would leave home 
unless Holmes chased you to the shore, unless Holmes told you to quicken your legs, leave your clothes behind, crawl through the desert, wade through the oceans, drown, save, be hunger, beg, forget pride. Your survival is more important. No one leaves home until home is a sweaty voice in your ear saying leave, run away from me now. I don't know what I've become, but I do know that anywhere is safer than here. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much. That was, that was powerful. That was powerful. Now I would like to bring back our poets from Hawthorne Avenue School. And first up, we have Fahiza Bilewu. This poem is going to be is um, called, Why Aren't We Part of Just Us? They say racism is eliminated, but we are still hated. Too many black people have died. Far too many mothers have cried. Like Pharaoh, our tears seem to harden your hearts. But what's crying going to do? Hate in us because of our skin, never seeing who we are within. There is so much police brutality, all because of our raciality, never our personality. Liberty and justice escapes us because we're, we're quote unquote destructive. The lust lives are many, and yet they try to pay us off with pennies. Do they think money will bring back our dead? America is perfect, America is great, so they say. But we're not dogs that must simply obey. Is there ever going to be a perfect nation? No, not unless we get liberation. Like Fanny, Lou Han, Hammer, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Not just because of the system, but because we're victims. Because we're marvelous, they're jealous. Trust and believe we're not clowns, so don't bring us down. When they see us around, they're scared, trying to pretend that they care. After all that I've seen, I declare justice, I'm disgusted. I've had enough, haven't you? Ooh, thank you, Fahiza. Thank you so much for that. Next up to the stage, make sure that y'all are Throwing love in that Facebook chat. Don't make me come after you. Next to the stage, we have um, Mr. Winston Hendricks. Good evening. My name is Winston Hendricks, a sixth grader at Hawthorne Avenue School. My social justice poem is a piece entitled Movement. March together to show what we live for. Overcome this madness. No more killing back lives. Violence won't help us. Empower. We can do this together. Maintain close links between industry and schools. Every black life matters. No more teary eye mothers. Today you will see the power we have within. And we'll go to Mr. Makai Mills. Mr. Mills, you have the floor. Say a louder for the people in the back. We're not all treated equal. Every month a black person dies, it's just a new sequel. They had their time when they took over, but now it's time for that to change. When a cop kills an innocent person but doesn't get sentenced, isn't that kind of strange? I never called the police because if I do, I will become the victim of the crime. In my neighborhood, when others call the police, they never get there on time. Social oppression is what ran us over. In the 1600s, the whites controlled us like a controller and made our self-esteem go lower, but nah, those days are over. They did Tamir Rice like the son did the ice cream. George Floyd dying from a cop kneeling on his neck is cool and extreme. They did Breonna Taylor like the wind did the dust. An innocent woman being gunned down left, left the black community in disgust. Malcolm X believed we should fight back to set us free. We once drowned in the deep blue sea crying for our lives, but now I know the key. The key is to save our money, start our businesses, spend our businesses there, instead of spending our dollars at Foot Locker and Gucci who really don't even care. Black, pe black people's lives are like a movie, but there is no end. It's crazy how the whites killed us, tortured us, steal our ideas, but they act like they want to be our friends. 
Sean Bell, Eric Garner, Trayvon Martin, the list goes on and on. Walter Scott, Freddie, Freddie Gray, Sandra Blaze seems like they're killing us from every morning, noon, and dawn. Isn't it strange how even I can be killed while sitting while black, driving while black, sleeping while black, eating while black, playing while black, shopping while black, work, working while black, walking while black, jogging while black. Listen up, my name is Makai Mills and growing up in America, there is no peace for anybody who looks like me. Thank you Makai for that. So powerful, so powerful. Um, I am just blown away by all the talent that we have seen here this evening. And I would like to bring back our final student, student poet of the evening, Sadaka Carmichael. Make America great again. Okay, make America great again, they say. Make America great again. From when? That time when black people were tied up and lynched? Was it really ever great to begin? Let it be the dream it used to be. Like when fathers were hanging from trees as their children's tears ran down their cheeks and the women stood there afraid to speak. Make America great again. Like when people were dragged across borders and separated from their families, just another one of America's modern day tragedies, right? Make America great again, like when Black Wall Street was burned to the ground to make sure white people could keep black people down. Make America great again, like when women had to protest for years just to be able to vote, or maybe when slaves were transported to America in chains by boat. Make America great again like how black people have to search tirelessly for freedom in this land of the free, where Protestants were murdered for what they believe make America great again. Thank you. Oh, yeah, y'all are killing me over here. These poems, these babies are speaking with their whole chest and I hope that you are listening. If you are not filling the chat with love and light for these babies, you better get in there right now. It is amazing to hear the words of the youth and I am so proud of each and every one of you for stepping up tonight to speak your truth. Do not ever be afraid to be your most authentic self and do not, do not stop writing. Use your voice. It is powerful. Thank you, Nashe. And now that we have all been inspired by these amazing students, I would like to introduce you all to Miss Karen Toomer, the director of my very own library of Greater Newark. Hello, everyone. I believe you all should have your video on now. I just want to say thank you to all of the students in Delaware, in Newark, New Jersey, and Chicago. Uh, 10 years ago, my very own library began as a book giveaway program to help students in uh, underserved communities build their own libraries. Never would I have imagined that 10 years later, you know, we would sit here in 2021 and have our students perform uh, the way they have, you know, they've blown it out of the park, you know. So I just want to thank you, students, for a wonderful performance. I applaud all of you. I feel inspired. You know, I feel ready to go out there and do, you know, wonderful things. And I also want to thank the teachers and the school staff for preparing our students. We see their writing skills, their public speaking skills, their history skills. You know, our, our students are doing a phenomenal job. And also behind the scenes, I'd like to thank uh, Lori for uh, helping us shape this program. This was an idea Ken and I, you know, thought about having our students perform uh, on the topic of social justice to have a forum to express themselves. And, and this has grown, you know, well beyond what we expected. So thank you, Lori. Thank you, Ken and, and Delaware. 
and Dwayne as our leader for my very own library national you know thank you for giving us the opportunity to put this together and also uh nate in in delaware thank you for your assistance and uh last but not least i would really like to thank alexis for serving as a wonderful host hostess uh performer uh extraordinaire you know you, you really you know brought this together home for us so Thank you everyone. And believe me, this is not the last time you will hear from our students. This will become an annual event. So thank you all, have a great evening, stay inspired, do something positive, and most importantly, keep reading your books and stay well. Thank you.